I'm Eris Slocum23, you're joining me for Desire to Corn Book 3, Chapter 10, by Royal Appointment. On the evening of your dinner with Queen Charlotte and Prince Regent. You sit at the vanity as Briar stands before you, carefully applying a rose to your cheeks, and Bambi lays curled in your lap, while Pugsley pants happily at your feet. I'm surprised this is not reverse, because it's a deer. I can't believe I'll be meeting the Prince Regent tonight. I have no idea what to expect. I've heard so many things. Truly, it seems everyone has an opinion on him. Well, I'm determined to impress him in one way or another. He must believe me when I reveal Comrade Renaud's plans. I've heard Prince Regent is indulgent, fond of drink, and appreciates women of beauty and wit. But he's also caprarious. One wrong move could cost, cast you out of his good graces. You could even end up in the Tower of London with Mr. Richards. Well, if that's true, then I'm certain I will dazzle him. If he enjoys women of beauty and wit, then he will certainly be charmed by me. Huh, he would be a fool otherwise. It's a good thing that Mr. Sinclair will be there to keep Prince Regent's behavior in check. Have you heard anything else about Reprint's region? Anything specific that might help me? Some of the servants say he fancies himself something of an architect. He's currently expanding Brighton Pavilion, so he can spend more time there with his mistress, Lady Hartford. I hear when it's completed, it will be the height of decadence. Um, what would I do without you, Briar? Your own cosmetics, I suppose. No, but I never do as lovely a job as you. With final touches on, on your rouge and then struts over to the wardrobe and begins to rummage. They've considered yourself doubly lucky to have me. You must look your best tonight. You can't have dinner with Queen and Prince Regent looking anything other than your marvelous, especially if you wish to sway them to your side. Briar pulls on a luxurious red dress with elegant gold stitching from the wardrobe, and then she hands you the white gloves and a cameo on a delicate gold chain. I've been saving this one for a very special occasion. Oh, Briar, it's absolutely splendid. I know. You will look as though you belong in the palace. The royals will surely be impressed. Besides, Mr. Seclair won't be able to keep his eyes off you all night. Try it on. Hmm. Pretty. Okay. It's pretty. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, that kind of makes her look bigger than usual. I don't know. Unless Pixelberry changed something up. You slip in the ruby gown, smoothing down the fabric as Briar makes quick work of fastening the bag. I feel marvelous. Surely, I will fit in amongst royalty. You look like a queen in your own right. You hear a knock at the door, followed by Mr. Woods' voice from beyond. Countess Bella, your carriage awaits you downstairs when you are ready. Well, thank you, Mr. Woods. I'll be down shortly. You take a few steps towards the door, but Pugsley quickly blocks your path. Bambi joins him, and they both stare up at you with wide, sad eyes. Let me guess, you want to come? You want to come, do you? You kneel beside them and, and begin str gently stroking Bambi's back and scratching under Pugsley's chin. I know you both shall miss me, but I must still go. You know, Pugsley, I hear that Prince Regent's dinners are decadent. I promise to bring you ba both the most fantastic treats I can find. How about that? Perhaps a goose wing for Pugsley and roasted dandelion greens for Bambi. I thought you would like that idea. You both give them... Uh kiss on the forehead and stand, and turn to Briar once more. I wish you luck, Bella. Don't forget the fate of the crown in the history of Egypt, er, wow, Egypt. England is on your shoulders tonight. Oh yes, how could I possibly forget? Where the hell did I see Egypt? Was it because I was speed reading it in my head? Shit. It's all gone down here, Locum doesn't know how to read anymore. A short ride later, your carriage delivers you, your grandmother, Countess Henrietta, and Viscount Harry to St. James Palace. 
it's as beautiful as I remember. I guess? Rather like you. Oh, flattery will not get you everywhere, but get your hands off me! You peer out of the counter corner, carriage door, and see Mr. Sinclair waiting for you, his hand extended to help you step down. Mr. Sinclair. Such a gentleman. You take his hand and disembark the carriage. My carriage arrived only moments before yours, and I thought I would greet you. In that case, we shall give you two a moment to speak and meet inside. They'll get lost on your way inside. The holes can be confusing for those with simple minds. Well, thank God you have an escort. This gone Harry shakes his head and pushes past you. Your grandmother and Countess Henrietta follow, giving you a moment alone with Mr. Sinclair. His eyes sweep across your form. You look astonishingly beautiful tonight, Bella. Surely you will put the Queen herself to shame. I do hope she will be impressed. I must admit, I am rather nervous to go inside. Perhaps it would help to go over what needs to be done. You nod and then release a deep breath and replete the plan. I need to charm the Prince Regent so that he trusts me, then try to get him and Queen Charlotte alone. And in the meantime, I will ensure the Countess Henrietta and Viscount Harry do not interrupt you. Then I will reveal Comte Renard's plot to usurp the throne and install little Percival as a figurehead for his reign. I will hold nothing back. But our chances will be slim. All they have is my word, and Queen Charlotte doesn't believe Sir Gideon to be the true threat before. What if this doesn't work? Well, then we will find another way. I've never known you to give up when your heart was set on something. Well, yes, I suppose one way or another we'll know soon enough. You square your shoulders. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Queen Charlotte stands beside the empty throne when you and Mr. Sinclair enter the throne room. Prince Regent is nowhere to be seen. Hello, Queen. I keep trying to tap to get past you, but... Countess Bella of Edgewater and Mr. Sinclair! Here we go. Your Mr. Sinclair approaches the throne, your arm looped through his, you stop a few paces away and offer a little curtsy. Countess Bella, it's lovely to see you again. Thank you, Your Majesty, but the pleasure is all mine. It's an honor to be in your presence. Takes in your appearance and gives you an approving nod. Your taste and presentation are impeccable this evening. I'm sure your grandmother is quite proud. Your Majesty, please allow me to present my brother, Harry, the Viscount Fordale. Viscount Harry takes a step forward and offers the Queen a hello bow. To be invited to dine with you, it is a great distinction. My brother is a brave and honorable servant of the crown. Viscount Harry's brow knits and his mouth drops open at your words. Yes, it's called being nice. You should try it sometime. It pleases me to hear it. I suppose heroism burns in your blood. Your Majesty, I was merely doing my duty for king and country. Don't you, Countess Dominique, my old friend. It is wonderful to see you. And you, how is... The grandmother is interrupted when Countess Henrietta pushes past her and curtsies to the Queen. You must be Countess Henrietta, if I'm not mistaken. I knew you would remember me, Your Majesty. I'm not so... Her words are cut short when the large double doors behind you are thrown open. His Royal Highness Prince George, Regent of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. You kind of look like a grandiose, like, thing. You like to get drunk a lot, think you're the bee's knees. All right, I got you, people watching. Mother dear, I see you've started without me. He trapezes past you and up onto the diocese and flops into his throne. He has a half-full glass of brandy in his hand and called it. 
things to watch it would do you to sit properly. Ah! Why does he look like the current prince we have? Who's gonna become king? He's the oldest and just a la thinner. He waves a dismissive hand at her as his eyes follow you, his smile wide. Where is this Countess Bella I've heard so much about? I am your royal highness. He leans forward appraising you. You've even lovelier than your reputation suggests. I'm looking for most fashionable. I must add, I appreciate a woman of great good taste. You can feel Mr. Seglaire's muscles tense. Prince Regent's words. And unlike him, you also have an appreciation for loyalty. You curtsy once more and your eyes cast towards the ground at Prince Regent's feet. You are most kind. Your Highness. I hope the expansion of Brighton Pavilion is coming along. I've heard wonderful things about its architecture. I hope to see it someday. You do? You would only be chivalrous for me to personally escort you. Hey, Mr. Sinclair, don't get mad. Calm down. And Mr. Sinclair, of course. My son, wasn't there something you wished to tell the Countess Bella? Ah, yes. I wish to extend my most ardent gratitude to you for exposing... Exposing, Mr. Richards. Of course, your royal highness. Most of England's defenders are stern and strapping, so rather like your brother here. I am quite pleased to find her the most recent savior rather more becoming. Prince Regent winks, and Mr. Seclair takes a step forward, his hand bawling into fists. I... No. He plays a hand on Mr. Seclair's arm, and he stops, though not without shooting you a vexed glance. Was there something you wished to say, mister? Sinclair, only that your reputation precedes you, your royal highness. I have heard stories of your levity and ostentation. The truth does not disappoint. Yes, we are all indebted to Countess Bella and Mr. Sinclair. As you both have been gracious enough to grant us an audience, Mr. Sinclair and I wish to formally extend an invitation to our wedding. You reach into your rectangle and produce the invitation. Suddenly all the points with the Prince Regent go away, and <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> the footman takes it and delivers it into Queen Charlotte's hands. Love conquers all obstacles. What a lovely sentiment. Have you arranged the menu as if I cannot attend? <clears throat> Your invitation is very thoughtful, and I am certain we can arrange to be present. It wouldn't do your, for your last wedding day to be the only one I attend. A footman bows before the throne, then whispers to the French regents here. He rises from the throne, raising his hands to the room. Come, my guests! I have some horde of oars and wine prepared to whet the appetite before dinner, sir. But as the group moves to the ballroom floor, Queen Charlotte pulls you aside. How does Bella, your grandmother's letter, mention that there was something you sought to discuss with me? Was it of your nuptials or something more? Yes. I requested an audience with you. Hmm, as it happens, I have a small surprise for you as well. Perhaps you would like to join me for a personal tour of the palace. It would give us some time away from prying eyes. How well, generous, Your Majesty. I desperately need to speak with you. Some privacy would certainly help matters. Then, let's away. Suddenly, Henrietta runs up to you, grabs onto your shoulders, and goes, Me! Take me with you! And then you go, Stop it! Down. Down. Queen Charlotte takes you to <laughs> several magnificent rooms, <laughs> including an enormous library in the Queen's levee room. Eventually, you find yourself atop a grand staircase. The balcony wall is lined with portraits of the royal family, going back generations. The Prince and Princesses of Orange, King Charles II. Ah, the painting of the Winter Queen is one of my favorites. They all look so very regal. She pauses before an immaculate rendition of a young boy housed in an ornate frame, her expression turning wistful. This one is of my son when he was a mere boy. I wish that time before he and his father grew so far apart, so different. I'm still not sure how a man of such indulgence and joy de vivre as born of frugal, prudent husband. 
Yes, sons can grow up to be very different from their fathers. In any case, we should be safe to discuss any sensitive matters here. Sir Gideon is back, under the guise of a Frenchman called himself Comde Renard. Sir Gideon, the man you claim was in league with Mr. Richards. He's the very same. He has not abandoned his quest to unseat the Prince Regent and the King himself. I couldn't mention it before because Viscount Harry is involved somehow. My brother is... <clears throat> An unwitting pawn of an evil man. I'm not sure how much he knows, but Sir Gideon has him believe all sorts of lies. I'm certain my brother isn't aware of the extent of Sir Gideon's wickedness. I'm certainly see why you wish for discretion. After what occurred to you at your near wedding, I truly believe you have England's best interest at heart, but I have my hesitations. Hmm, what gives you cause for hesitation? Hesitations, what could... I need to discuss the matter with my son and give it a thought before taking any action. Your Majesty, of course, do whatever you must. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my concerns, Your Majesty. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. You will have my decision before the night is over. In the meantime, I still have a surprise for you. Queen Charlotte smiles mischievously as she pulls the head to a particularly large painting. It swings open, revealing a room beyond. You follow her through the door, which opens into an understating sitting room. I discovered this room shortly after my arrival in England, and it was uh, has been my s private escape ever since. Now for your surprise. That was not in? She chuckles as she moves to a mahogany. Mahogany cabinet in the corner of the room. I cannot imagine the sort of surprise the Queen of England would wish to present me. It was, uh, it will not disappoint, I am certain. She turns around, revealing a dazzling necklace of sapphires, diamonds, and gold, matching the bracelet and teardrop earrings. Are, are those. How? Yes, I'm quite speechless when I first saw them myself. These were made by a young queen, Kendra of Cordonia, who gifted them to Queen Elizabeth. They have been passed down as crown jewels ever since. Considering your history, it seems as though you are meant to wear them at your wedding. You, you mean to let me wear them? Well, of course. They are even Edgewater Blue. This is an incredibly generous offer, possibly too generous. I at least try them on before you make up your mind. Picture yourself in your dress on the morning of your wedding day. Accept the crown jewels and enhance your wedding wardrobe. Remember, the more items you collect, the more exclusive scenes you learn. Those are very pretty. So that's our gown so far? Or is that the is that the official gown or I don't know. I don't know if we picked out our gown. It's been a while, okay? I've been out of the loop. I cannot possibly say no, Your Majesty. I feel like absolute royalty. I am elated to hear it. I will make sure the unnecessary arrangements are made. Which, by the way, guys, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield will be out on uh, November 15th. I will be streaming it live on Twitch. Just thought I'd share that. The dinner gong sounds as Queen Charlotte returns the jewels to the case she turns to you. We should rejoin the others. A feast awaits us. Shortly after, you enter the dining hall and take your seat between Mr. Sinclair and the Prince Regent. He leans in, captivated by you. You must tell me, Countess Bella, are the rumors true? That depends. Do they paint me in a positive light? <laughs> You're a saucy one. Mr. Sinclair leans in, whispers in your ear. Do these tactics truly work for him? The rumors to which I, I'm sure that him being a Prince Regent works for him more than his crap. The rumors to which I refer regard your parentage and your upbringing among the lower class. It's true that I was raised in Grovershire, unaware of my father's status. And yet her manners are better than some ladies raised at the court. In my grandmother's eyes flash to Countess Henrietta, whose smile sours. I would sooner compare them to a bond cat. And there you go, perfect example of shitty manners. 
I find the Countess to be a picture of dignity and grace. You should be proud. That's a Mr. Sinclair. See, his knuckles are white around his fork, and his jaws clenched. He avoids the Prince Regent's gaze. Dude, you need to calm down. Like, it just... Okay, it's okay to be jealous over a girl, trust me. But you don't need to kill a man because of it. Are you quite all right, Mr. Sinclair? Has the venison offended you somehow? <laughs> <laughs> no, your royal highness, everything is satisfactory. In any case, I only inquired because my usual dinner guests were born and bred among gentry. I wonder what a woman of your unique background thinks of my hospitality. I have been told I'm a very gracious host. Why, your royal highness. Mm. Remember, he likes wine. Remember that. Mm, I'm thinking, though. So I don't know whether to go with flattery or the wine. Let us risk this one and go with more wine. A woman after my own heart. He gestures for a footman who instantly comes forward to fill your glass. It is truly a party if the wine isn't freely flowing. Not in the least. With such opinions, I shouldn't be surprised to find you a guest here more often, Countess Bella. Now, Viscount Harry, how did you, a lad so young, become a spy on foreign soil? I was rather advantaged, advanced in my studies when I was approached and already fluent in French. You turn and make polite conversation with Queen Charlotte and Mr. Sinclair as the next course is served. Later in the evening, as the footmen bring out the dessert course, Queen Charlotte glances at you and then turns to Viscount Harry. Viscount Harry, I have heard some rather troubling rumors about your friend Comte Renan. Indeed, I imagine you did. I hope to get your opinion on the matter. Comte Renan is beyond reproach as far as I'm concerned. I would be buried in the soil in France were it not for that man. What's all of this about then? Perhaps Countess Bella ought to explain, as she is the one who brought these concerns to my attention. Queen Charlotte throwing me under the bus, what the actual f Oh, er, yes. If I may be so bold, I urge you to listen to my granddaughter. She would not make such a claims lightly. Hmm, I should heal out her thoughts on the matter, Countess Bella. The truth is... Mr. Richards has a hair. He has an illegitimate son named Percival, and the boy is being manipulated towards the end of stealing the crown. Over the next few minutes, you reveal the rest of your story for the entire table to hear, but you see the man is highly dangerous. These accusations are baseless. I've never heard of the so-called Percival, nor seen Comte with any children. I do not wish to offend, but you understand that we must take your sister's claims seriously. I, for one, believe my son. Not only is he a royal, loyal servant to the crown, but the true heir of its order. Countess Bella is a loyal servant in her own right. She foiled Mr. Richard's plot and saved the country. Indeed, and she has no reason to create a story where there is none. Enough! Countess Bella, I have delighted in your conversation and visage tonight. That much is certain. There is no denying that you are a woman of charm and wit. I am pleased you think so, Your Royal Highness. However, that does mean I believe this, this boulder dash. I would not take your word over that of a man who gave up his life and inheritance in the name of the country. The threat was stopped alongside Mr. Richards. Viscount Harry and uh, Countess Bella have both risked their lives and safety for the crown. Oh, would you question the Prince Regent? Honestly, such a clearly weak-minded woman may not be fit to continue managing Edge. Mother, now is not the time. You will not investigate further? I fail to see how this Sir Gideon fellow could hope to usurp the throne without a confirmed child of the former Duke. Yes, it is difficult to see a path of victory without a true heir to Dutching Carlington. But if you would just lit 
Perhaps if you would prove that the child was sired by Mr. Richards. Unless you have such evidence, this matter is finished. I will prove the truth. I will not rest until England is safe from this treachery. Your dedication is appreciated, but the matter is closed for the evening. Mm. Several hours later, after dinner has concluded, you walk with Mr. Sinclair towards your carriage. Shoulders slumped as you, you watch Viscount Harry help his mother and then the Dowager Countess into the carriage. That, that did not go as planned. Nothing in this book or this game ever does. Perhaps not, but there must be another way to stop Conte Renard. We might, will find it. You glance at your carriage with a grimace and see Viscount Harry holding over the door, a victorious smile on his face. Come along, Countess Bella. If we're late, Conte Renard will begin to worry about something. Have gone awry. You turn back to Mr. Sinclair, your eyes desperate. I don't know whether I can stomach riding in that carriage after what's just happened. I can already imagine Countess Henrietta's smug expression. No, that won't do at all. Ride with me. I would relish a bit of your time and a chance to play your savior for the evening. Oh, Ernest, you are my savior, now and always. Mrs. Glare takes your hand and guides you past your carriage to another one waiting beyond me. Helps you out. You take your seat and Mr. Sinclair sits beside you, his leg gently pressed against yours. By the by, by the by, by the way, don't think your jealousy went unnoticed this evening. Yes, well, I did not enjoy the sight of him flirting with you so brazenly, or at all for that matter. He could have any woman he wants, and of course he would be interested in someone as winsome as you. Oh, Ernest. You are the only one for me. I promise you, my heart will never waver. You press your palm to Mr. Sinclair's cheek, guiding his eyes to meet yours. I am not Rosalind. I understand your fears, but you must trust that my feelings are true. Of course I trust you. But that does not mean I will ever cease to feel protective of you. The devil will take me before I allow that which I hold dearest to be stolen away. I love you with everything that I am, my sweetest Bella. Just as I love you, Ernest. Alas, it seems my efforts tonight were all for naught. I still am not certain how we are to remove the threat of Comte Renard from without the help of the crown. At least now we know what is required to make them believe us. Assuming we can find any evidence at all. Comte Renard is no fool. He'll not make that easy. Stop the carriage! The carriage suddenly slows to a halt as the clopping of hooves and the cobblestone ceases. What is it? Is something the matter? Yes, something is the matter in the world when you are anything but happy and hopeful. Now, I may not be able to solve our Comte Renard troubles tonight, but I can at least take your mind off of them. Join me for a walk about London, and perhaps we can find something suitably distracting to do. Or we can carry on to our townhouse and continue to wallow. The choice is yours. Go on an adventure in London with Mr. Sinclair. Why not? I can think of nothing I would like more. Take Mr. Sinclair's hand, he opens the carriage door, leading you out into the street. You gaze out over the scenery, still lost in thought. Tell me, Bella, what is the most worst possible scenario should Comte Renard win? Well, it's hardly taking my mind off of things. Humor me. The worst case is, uh, we would up in the Tower of London. Surely we would be arrested and locked up in a cell beside Mr. Richards. We would almost certainly never see each other again. No bars, no locks, no guards could ever keep me from seeing you. I would break you free. We would be together for once again. You see, the only thing Comte Renard will, can never do is keep us apart. I will go to the ends of the earth for you. As long as I have you, I have light, I have hope, and I have joy. Ernest, I know that you would never cease fighting for me. You continue down the street, and soon you find yourself looking out over the River Thames. Westminster Bridge. I had no idea we were so close. 
I recall wishing to bring you here once. Perhaps it was the best thing that uh, I couldn't, I, for I am not certain I could have resisted the desire to kiss you. Oh, please, kiss me now. You need not resist any longer. His lips turn up at a slight smile as he leans towards you ever so slowly. The distance between you scares and yet entirely too great. Yes, my dearest Bella. Your lips tingle with anticipation until finally, mercifully, you feel the soft press of his mouth against yours. You let out a low moan as stars cloud your vision, and all you know is the flutter of his tongue and the heat of his hands at your waist. Mm. It's over far too soon as Mr. Sinclair draws back his face, slightly flushed. Was kissing me at Westminster Bridge everything you dreamed of? You should know by now that the reality of you always exceeds my imagination. You pull back and step towards the railing, the edges of the bridge, running your hand over along the rough stone. Sometimes when I am lost in troubles, I come to this bridge and play a game. A game? The ever-stoic Ernest Sinclair does not consider this frivolous, sir? It is, but even the ever-stoic Ernest Sinclair indulges in frivolity on occasion. And what is it, then? I watch other people and play at guessing what they will do next. I've developed quite a skill for it, if I may be so bold as to boast. He people watch us, basically. You have always been so bold, sir. Go on, then. Show me. Okay. Do you see that couple there? He points to the far end of the bridge where you see a young woman walk arm in arm with a dapper young gentleman. In just a moment, he'll stop her. The man places a hand on the woman's arm and holds them both by the railing. Now he will drop to one knee and propose. Do you truly think so? The man places a hand against the woman's cheek for just a moment and then falls to his knee. You watch as the woman's face breaks into a joyous smile, and she nods. I can't believe you guessed that. You must simply look for the clues. It isn't terribly difficult. I must try it. That's around, but there isn't another soul inside. Come, there's another place I have a vacation nearby. Mr. Sinclair leads you down a street and around a corner, and you soon emerge into a square in the shadow of a tall clock, to clock tower. What do you make of them? He points to a couple of women with a young girl walking between them. They seem to be a family. Yes, now watch them for a moment. You do as he says and soon you see the little girl grow th bo blah, 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 grab both of her parents by the hand. Alright, now guess what will happen next. I think they will break in a song, start skipping, lift her up off her feet. I'll lift her up off of her feet. As the words leave your lips, the parents raise up their arms and swing the girl through the air. She squeals with delight. I did it. You're a natural, Bella. I was not quite as accurate with my initial attempt. It was a good guess. Be kind to yourself, Ernest. Not everyone can be as innately talented as I am. Ah, ah. Ah, you're so humble. The young family turns down side street, leaving you and Mr. Sinclair alone. London is quite a beautiful city, isn't it? Undeniably so. It inspires a certain passion in me. Or perhaps that is you. Mr. Sinclair takes your hand and pulls you into a shadowed corner with a view of the open, star-filled sky. Oh, Ernest thought for my love for you could grow no deeper. Yet I was wrong. Somehow you still managed to surprise me with your thoughtfulness. You know precisely what to say to raise my spirits. Each morning I rise to thoughts of how to make you happy. I will never cease learning each and everything that can cheer you up, my Bella. I love you more than anything in the world or the next. Mr. Sinclair pushes you back against the brick wall of the building, hidden in the shadows of the alley. He presses a smattering of kisses to your neck and collarbones as his hands press against your hips. 
Oh. Close your eyes, losing yourself in the feel of his lips against your skin. Your heart races in your chest. My beloved. You start all out of your re reverie by a chiming of a massive clock above. I did not realize an hour had already passed us by. Nor did I. You should get home. Miss Dally will be most eager to know what happened tonight. Come. The carriage awaits us. Walk arm in arm through the streets of London until you finally return to Mr. Sinclair's carriage. As the streets pass by, you gaze out the window. A familiar building comes into view. Stop! Hold the car carriage! Again? As much as I wish to spend the entire night. No, it's not that. Give me a moment. The carriage comes creaking to a halt once more, and you throw the door open, rushing into the street. It's Mr. Richard's former townhouse? You regard the building, your mind racing as your eyes scan the front door and lamp lit windows. I know what we must do. The key to understanding Comedy and Renard's plans is in his old associates, Mr. Richards. They are two of a kind. Low though I am to say it. We must speak with Mr. Richards at the Tower of London at once. Next time on Desire and Accord and Without the Queen Charlotte Sport, you need to speak with Mr. Richards, but how will you gain access to the most secure building in all of London? Well, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head to the description below, links to social media, Discord, a few links to support me, my family, and the content. Um, so like I said, Pokemon uh, Shield and Sword will be coming out on November 15th. I will also be in five days from now streaming Outer Worlds. Um, I will be doing both of those on Twitch, so head over there. Um, you know, as you see up there, follow me on Twitch. Literally, just, it's down below in the description. Um, or you can just literally go to Twitch and hit Locum23. Um, also consider hitting that bell icon next to subscribe to receive notifications of when I upload content, otherwise YouTube will not let you know, and also consider also hitting that join button on YouTube. Um, it's a great way of showing your support, great way of saying, you know, hey, you have done this for many, many years, and I would like to say thank you by giving something back. Um, if you're not able to, that's fine. Please just make sure to hit that share button. Share the channel with people. Get people to come. Get people to subscribe. It's my one and only dream and hope right now is we build a bigger community, build a bigger family, and um, just be awesome together, you know? Be better to one another. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Good day.